So today I'm going to present to you the Multiminute uh, project. Uh, we've just heard a little bit of it about it uh, just before. So this is a, a big project. Here are the names of uh, the main developers of the project. So uh, Alexandre Martin who did the lattice part, Richou for the spin, Marcus uh, for uh, the lattice and the coupling with uh, Scallop, Nicole Helbig for uh, the uh, spin lattice coupling and uh, Philippe who is uh, our supervisor. So our motivation are uh, to understand and uh, uh, control uh, properties of material using very large scale simulation uh, with the accuracy of first principles. So the idea is to control uh, several uh, quantities like the charge, the orbitals, the spins, uh, the lattice displacement uh, to engineer some properties and to control them and uh, be able to um, access uh, relevant properties at uh, operating uh, condition for very large systems. So you just heard about uh, the electron part just before. Here uh, in the multi minit package, we have a different uh, potential. The first one that we worked a lot on uh, is the atomic potential, the lattice part of the potential, which is um, mainly uh, an harmonic part with the strain uh, that you can build from the DDB coming from a, a DFPT calculation or an XML file that is uh, something that you already calculated before, either with uh, abinit or multibinit or with the scale up packages. So there is uh, a compatibility between both codes. So this is the harmonic part and then you have the harmonic part that you need to build also. So to build it, you will use an MD trajectory or again, another XML file that contains the data you need to build the harmonic part, either coming from a multi binit or scale up. Then when you have the full lattice potential, you can reduce this potential to uh, uh, an effective potential using only a few mods. So you can select the mods you want to use. So you will do a projection of the full uh, harmonic lattice potential onto the um, effective harmonic potential, including the strain. And again, you have an harmonic potential that you need to build either projecting the harmonic potential coming from uh, the lattice part or doing another fit with that in it. Oops. The third potential that you have in the multi minute package is the spin potential. So you will build the magnetic model. Uh, the harmonic part will be built with the FPT and also you can use an XML file. And the last uh, potential that we want to use uh, is the electronic potential that you've just heard a lot uh, just before. So you use a value function, type binding, uh, and lattice coupling. And all this is included in the scale-up packages. So all those potentials are uh, very different uh, and have very different properties. So we decided to develop a common abstract uh, layer to merge all the potential and be able to mix them if we want to have the lattice potential and the spin potential together, or the lattice potential plus the electronic potential. So we developed this common abstract layer that will be used by all the potential. And once we have this uh, abstract layer, we can run uh, any dynamics uh, you want. So molecular dynamics, Monte Carlo, PIMD, past integral molecular dynamics, uh, spin dynamics, or even other external tools. Then you have a lot of uh, results that you want to analyze. So you can use AGAT or QAGAT to analyze the results. So here I will mainly present the lattice part of the potential that Alexandre Martin, Marcus Schmidt, and I worked on. Then we have uh, the effective potential uh, that is developed by uh, William uh, Lafargue Diore. He has a poster over there, so you can go there if you want to know more about it. Then you have the spin potential uh, developed by Hishu. He will present uh, his model just uh, two, two talks after me. And the last one is the electronic potential by Javier, Pablo, and Marcus that we already heard about. And Marcus will present uh, this 
uh, coupling with electron and lattice afterwards. So multiminute is a big package. It has its own executable in the main directory of Abinit, and there is a directory for all the sources of the potential, which is the 78 underscore fpot uh, directory. There are more and more files, so we think we will split this directory in a smaller directory to um, divide uh, the structure, one directory for the abstract layer, one directory for the spin potential, another one for the lattice, and so on. So we, we can really split everything and work separately for every potential. And also another one for the movers. Uh, a new input file uh, is created. It's a mix between the Abinit input file and the AnaDDB input file. Multiminute can read XML files with a Fortran parser or using the libxml library, which is very fast and efficient, so we recommend to use this one. It has a full MPI implementation. You have molecular dynamics coming from Abinit, so uh, NPT, NVT, and isocinetic, uh, kinetic, sorry, and uh, hybrid Monte Carlo also. Uh, we included a few tests and a new documentation topic on the website. So if you go to the website and look for multiminute topic, you will uh, learn a little more about that. And of course, we have a few tutorials to help you to uh, build and use the lattice potential and the spin potential. So now we will focus on the lattice effective Hamiltonian. So um, previously, the basic procedure was to express the energy as the Taylor uh, expansion and use high symmetry reference structure. We selected a few modes that we want to study and the strain eventually, and then we could uh, determine the coefficients. Um, once the effective potential is built, you can run any dynamics you want uh, to explore the energy surface. Uh, there were several uh, successful results, but uh, you needed to identify a small set of degree of freedom before, because uh, it was just a few modes. And here we want a more general description of the energy surface. So we want to include all the atomic degree of freedom. So basically, the uh, lattice energy can be expressed um, in uh, three parts. The first one is the energy change due to the strain, which is only harmonic here. Then you have the energy coming from uh, the phonons, uh, so the atomic displacement. This energy is split in two parts, the harmonic part and the anharmonic part. The harmonic part is again split in two. The first part is the short range uh, energy, and the second one is the long range energy when you have oxide. And the last term here is the uh, strain phonon coupling. Uh, uh, again, you have a harmonic part and an anharmonic part. So it's exactly as the effective potential that we had before, but here we include all atomic degree of freedom, including the strain and strain phonon. So if you go a little bit more into details, so um, as I said, the lattice energy can be expressed as an harmonic and ha anharmonic part. So the harmonic part is basically all the interatomic force constant, and then you have all the higher order that are the su successive derivative of the energy. Of course, uh, the energy must uh, comply with the acoustic sum rule. So as it is very difficult to enforce it for a high order, larger than two actually, um, we use uh, this uh, uh, differences of displacement. So the acoustic sum rules is satisfied by construction. So instead of uh, having uh, just a product of displacement, we have a product of differences of displacement. Now, um, the harmonic part is split in two, so the short range and the long range. This is coming from uh, here. If you express the total energy at the second order, you can split the IFC in a short and long range. And after a few maths, you see that here you have uh, the short range and here the long range. What you need to be uh, very careful about is uh, the, in the, the range on which uh, you need to do the summation here and there. So if you have the short range that has a range that is smaller than the long range, 
you need to be aware that here the short range need to have some zero outside its region and consider the full larger long range region. In the other side, if the long range, na um, uh, namely if the supercell has a size smaller than the short range, then you need to put some zero outside uh, the short range and consider the larger supercell size uh, for the total range of your uh, interatomic fossil ensemble. Then you have the anharmonic part. For the anharmonicity degree, you need to choose how large you want to go, if you want to go to the third, fourth, sixth, sixth order uh, in the Taylor expansion. For each order, you need to express uh, the coefficients here and be sure that the acoustic sum rule is enforced. So that's why, again, we use uh, differences. But there are a lot of terms. If you go to uh, th uh, third, fourth order, you have many, many terms. So you want to reduce the number of terms. To do that, we use the symmetries. So using the symmetries, you can reduce the number of coefficients that you need to calculate. So you just take the symmetries of the reference structure with all the terms you can and apply the symmetries to see uh, what terms go with another one uh, when you apply a symmetry. For example, here for a regular uh, perovskites, you see that if you use th just the first neighbors, you can have only 15 independent parameters. Then uh, we have uh, finally, so the harmonic terms, which is obtained from DFT calculation directly and use AnaDDB uh, to separate and recalculate the short range and long range. Uh, and this is exact by construction. Then we have the harmonic terms, uh, which uh, are expressed as uh, differences uh, of displacement. And we need to reduce the number of terms that we want to calculate because they will be calculated uh, by a fit on a DFT training set. I will come back to the fit a little bit afterwards. Then we have the strain. So the strain is coming directly from uh, the DFPT. So here we have the harmonic part and the harmonic uh, part. So here we will not consider the anharmonic term because in practice it's not really required for a qualitative uh, result. So we just use the elastic constant coming from DFPT. And finally the strain for non-coupling. So here you have the harmonic uh, part and then the harmonic part. So the harmonic part can be calculated directly, but the anharmonic part need to be fitted also. And again, we use uh, uh, differences to be sure that uh, the acoustic sum rule uh, is satisfied. So how do we do the, the fit? So for both uh, phonon and strain phonon terms, we will fit the harmonic coefficient together. So we will define a training set with several configurations that we will calculate with a DFT, uh, abinit, for example. And then we will apply a least square method to minimize uh, a goal function. So here, this is the goal function where you will uh, minimize the difference between the DFT forces and the forces coming from your potential and uh, the stresses. Uh, so the goal is to uh, minimize the derivative with the displacement and uh, the strain of the goal function. So here you have M1 and M2, so you can apply a weight if you want to be more precise on either the forces or the strain. And then you solve the problem. So to do the fit, so here are the standard uh, input variable that you may use to uh, generate the coefficient to which range you want to go, the number of coefficients you want. So you can decide how many coefficients uh, you want, uh, the cutoff for uh, finding the pairs, uh, the strain phonon if you want to uh, include the strain phonon coupling, and so on. So here is a, um, an example, so calcium titanate. So you have in black uh, the DFT energy along uh, an MD trajectory. So here is the, the time step. And in the red, uh, you have the energy. So you see that at the beginning, the energy is very close. But as the forces are, are not very accurate compared to the DFT calculation, then 
the two empty trajectories uh, that are separated, they are not the same. But if we include one uh, coefficient in the anharmonic part, uh, the energy changes a little bit more, and the more coefficient you add, the closer you are to the uh, original DFT trajectory. And if you go to 50 coefficient, here you are very, very close uh, to uh, the original DFT uh, trajectory. So here we can uh, zoom here. And you see that the, the, the mean uh, standard deviation of the energy is very small. So cat, uh, 4 point, uh, 4.45 millev uh, per unit cell. So it's very uh, small. And here we included uh, more than 100 coefficients. So the more you add, the more uh, precise it is. But it's more complicated to fit. Another problem is that you need to bound the potential. As we go for high order, uh, you can have a coefficient that have a negative value, so the potential will go down, and you might be, you might be very unstable. So you need to add some artificial physics with math to bound the process, and Marcus will present a little bit more about that in his presentation. And finally, uh, you can visualize uh, the trajectory and perform some MD analysis uh, with AGAT, extract um, the phonons using uh, TDEP. Donc François Botin will uh, present uh, this method afterwards. And you can also uh, project on mods to follow the um, uh, phase transition. So the lattice part uh, is uh, done, so it's working. Uh, there is an interface to make the link between the first principle calculation and the second pr uh, principle calculation, and you can go to very large systems, so more than 100,000 of atoms. There is an automatic procedure to construct the model, either the harmonic part and the anharmonic part, for the uh, phonons, phonon, uh, strain phonon coupling and the strain. There is an automatic bounding process to be sure that the potential is bounded, and you can use all the uh, molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo included in the Abinit package to run the dynamics. And you have uh, Agat to extract the physics and analyze the results. Uh, finally, so here are the next talks. So Rishu will talk about the, the spin dynamics, spin potential. Uh, Nicole helping about the spin net coupling. And um, there is the work in progress of William about the effective Hamiltonians and Marcus will present the coping with electronic potential. And so thank you for your attention, and here are all, not all, but a lot of the contributors to this project. Thank you. <laughs>